You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Beyond the Headlines. My name is Joyce Tabriga. I'm the editor of Chicago Catholic, and this is where we take a look at the people making the news behind the headlines that we're covering in the Chicago Catholic newspaper. I'm coming to you from home today. I'm a little under the weather, but joining us in the studio is Anthony Holzer. He's president of Empower Illinois. Welcome, Anthony. Good morning, Joyce. Great to be with you. Thank you. So today our story is that we're focusing on is how St. Fran- St. Joseph, St. Fran, I always switch these around. St. Joseph, St. Francis, Xavier Parish in Wilmette is committed to raising up $800,000 in tax credit scholarships for their sharing school, St. Thomas of Canterbury in Uptown. And what effectively that will do will help cover all of the students in the school with scholarships um, to, for this academic year. And they, it's super significant because the families, as you know, Anthony, adds St. Um, Thomas of Canterbury are all at the poverty level or below poverty level. So it's a really, really big support to them. So let's start from the beginning. Maybe let's talk about, explain to, for our listeners, maybe they don't know what um, tax credit scholarships are. Great. Happy to, Joyce. So uh, the, the tax credit scholarship program here in Illinois uh, was made possible through a law that passed with bipartisan support in 2017. That law was known as the Invest in Kids Act, and it did a number of things, including increasing uh, funding for education broadly. And specifically to our conversation today, what that law did is it created the Tax Credit Scholarship Program. Uh, How that works is um, the state allows for up to $100 million in contributions to be made every single year to a scholarship granting organization like Empower Illinois. We turn those dollars into scholarships for kids to attend their best fit private school. And in exchange for their donation, both corporate uh, and individual donors receive a 75% uh, state tax credit off of their uh, individual uh, state income tax liability. So that's important. It's a credit, not a deduction. Uh, So you can uh, reduce or even eliminate your state tax liability and direct those dollars to a school community to help families in need um, Uh, again, in in a community or area uh, that's important to you. Donors can also designate, uh, individual donors that is, can designate a specific school or group of schools to benefit. I've always thought it was an amazing program and I know um, it has to be renewed how many years in? Yeah, so uh, so uh, the tax credit scholarship program here in Illinois um, is uh, we join about 19 other states that have similar programs, and ours was passed as a pilot program in 2017 with a five-year sunset or- originally. Uh, thankfully, a year ago we got a one-year extension. So what that means is that uh, the program um, will set uh, is set to sunset on December 31st, 2023, unless legislative action is taken. So we're working very hard uh, right now with our uh, broad coalition and our legislative champions to make sure that this vital program uh, can continue for generations to come. We've seen it already have tremendous life-changing impact for thousands of kids, and we certainly want that to continue. Do we have an estimate statewide on how many scholarships have been given out or how many people have received them? Yeah, th- these numbers are staggering. So since uh, the beginning of the program, uh, went, so when we went live January 1st, 2018, over $275 million have been raised. That number is phenomenal. What that translates to is something even more important, and that's scholarships. Uh, over 30,000 scholarships have been issued in that same time. Uh, every single year, we see more and more kids and families applying. And uh, at Empower Illinois alone, um, for every one scholarship we uh, issue or award, there are five more students in line uh, hoping to receive a scholarship to attend their best fit school. So the demand here uh, massively outpaces our, our current ability to, to fund those. And again, we're working hard. And if there are donors out there who, who have state tax liability, uh, care about kids and value education, this is a great program. There are kids in line right now 
uh, who can get into their best fit school with uh, with their generous donation. So let's talk about St. Joseph, St. Francis, Xavier, and Wilmette. You've been working with them since the beginning. Do you want to explain for us um, how they got started in this effort and why? Absolutely. So I, this is uh, this is the kind of program, the, the kind of partnership uh, that makes me smile. It's it's what is so good uh, and joyful uh, about our church and um, this this commitment to solidarity. So uh, St. Thomas of Canterbury is a school, as you mentioned uh, just moments ago, where 100 percent of the students um, are eligible for scholarships. Uh, they're below the federal poverty level. There's immense need there. And they have this uh, unique partnership that I've come to understand as a sharing parish model that exists between many parishes in the Archdiocese of Chicago. And so we uh, had this uh, great opportunity to connect with Father Wayne Watts, the pastor of the St. Francis, uh, St. Joseph. Um, no, Joyce, you've got me doing it now. I've flipped them <laughs> again. The St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier Ward uh, Parish. And uh, this was really his idea, as well as um, spearheaded by uh, one of our board members, uh, Chris Vallis, who's a parishioner there as well. Uh, they visited the school, got to understand the need, and in understanding the need, knew that there were um, you know, about 130 kids on the wait list. That's kids who had applied for a tax credit scholarship and were waiting for one to attend the school. So uh, what they did is they put together a, a matching grant challenge. Initially, it was $300,000. And then um, with anchor donors who said, I will uh, put up this money if uh, members from our parish will match it. Uh, the need grew uh, as the summer progressed and more kids wanted to attend St. Thomas of Canterbury. And so the match pool grew uh, to, to 800000 And the challenge remained. Will uh, other parishioners and members of the community uh, step up and match these dollars so that we can clear the wait list and make sure every child in line gets a seat at St. Thomas of Canterbury to start the school year. And they made sure this was after, in addition to um, meeting the needs of their own community. I mean, Wilmette is um, blessed with a lot of resources and such, but they this was a step beyond what they were already doing. Yeah, this this is a, um, just, a, again, a, an incredible and very inspiring act of generosity. Uh, there, there are students at the school um, there at St. Francis, uh, St. Joseph, St. Francis, uh, that, that qualify, and they met that need at the school uh, through the generous support of donors in the community. This was above and beyond. And uh, again, I think speaks so beautifully to the commitment of solidarity and certainly the special partnership that I know has existed for a very long time uh, between those parish communities. Right, and I know the parish um, helps out. Thomas of Canterbury has a um, a soup kitchen too, so I know that the parish is very involved. And Thomas of Canterbury, it's this is for any of those who are listening or watching who understand the Renew My Church dynamics. Um, St. Thomas of Canterbury was merged with St. Ida and St. Gregory the Great Parish, so now it's Mary Mother of God Parish, mm. but in the school, is part of both Mary Mother of God Parish and St. Mary of the Lake Parish. So it gets, in the world of Renew My Church, it gets a little, um, it's a little complicated as it, it, as it just seems to be. Yeah. But, and it's, St. Thomas of Canterbury is such an interesting school because it's truly like diverse in the diversity world. They are largely immigrants, first generation or new immigrants coming from, different countries in Africa. A lot of them are refugees. It's mm -hmm. uptown is kind of like, um, that's, I'm not sure. I know that there were a lot of social service agencies and stuff there, but uptown is sort of where a lot of them land. And so it's a very, very diverse and unique uh, parish or school rather. And then a lot of the parents, as you know, this um, from talking to the principal and such, they're working hospitality jobs, they're working um, restaurants as mm -hmm. maids and hotels. So it's not that it's not like they have a lot of means to draw on, but they also want to provide a better future for their kids and better opportunities for their, their children. So it's, it's a really good thing. And I know that when I talked to the principal, she was super excited about, she said they've had donors in the past, but they've never had this happen where all their, their students are going to get covered by the tax credit scholarship program. So I also know that you all are hoping at Empower are hoping to, I'm reading this on the website, yeah. are hoping to um, 
use this as a, a model to pilot in other parishes in the archdiocese. Absolutely. So this was, um, uh, again, uh, kind of the vision and leadership of Father Wayne Watts and uh, Chris Vallis and, and the, uh, the two communities, uh, the two parish communities with St. Thomas of Canterbury. But we think we're onto something here, um, whether it's a formal sharing parish relationship, th something that's been established, uh, you know, through tradition and over time, or if there's, an, uh, you know, a parish out there that, that wants to become involved and, and wants to help um, kids get access to a great fit school. Maybe that parish has its own school or maybe they're one without one. Uh, we, we've got a, a playbook now. We, uh, we know that it can and is, uh, can be and is successful. And we're here to help. Um, we really want to expand this um, throughout the archdiocese, again, in formal ways uh, through those sharing parishes that already exist. Uh, but if there are, you know, pastors out there, uh, donors, uh, members of uh, parish communities that hear this and are interested, um, please do reach out. We'd love to work with you uh, and to help meet this need, which we know is uh, significant across the archdiocese and certainly throughout the state. And they would go to Empower Illinois. Is it .org .com? Empower Illinois org. We've got a great um, a customer success team uh, there. We've got all, all the numbers on our website. Um, and uh, you know, if if you uh, call into that and let them know what you're what you're uh, inquiring about, they'll make sure that uh, you either connect with me or a member of our team to make sure that we can uh, follow up with you. Okay, we're going to come up on a break here soon. I want to plug some stuff in the newspaper, but when we come back, Anthony, I want to talk about um, one of the questions I had is: this is a unique program or a unique way to. Um, help a lot of kids but then what happens next year and i know you guys have a plan for that on retaining donors but um so we'll head to a break but this is so i wanted to give a shout out to the newspaper if everybody goes to chicagocatholic.com you can subscribe it's 30 dollars a year we publish about every two weeks we have a free e-newsletter that you can sign up for and we you can follow us on social media some of the things we have um in this latest issue is uh we had a um a beautiful mass and um, anointing of the sick at the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Des Plaines for parents who lost children. And we also had coverage of a peace day that took place down um, in the Bronzeville neighborhood. It started with the sunrise mass on the beach. And then there was a symposium talking about how to address the issues of gun violence in the city. And we also have an update on how the rising inflation rate has impacted the local food pantries because a lot of people are, are um, there's they're seeing a, a bigger increase in need for food at um, in food pantries in our parishes and Catholic charities and across the board. So here okay, we're going to take a quick break. This is Joyce Deriga, Chicago Catholic. My guest is Anthony Holzer from Power Illinois and we'll be right back. Catholic Charities Refugee Resettlement Program has been especially busy this year, assisting individuals and families who have fled dangerous situations in their homeland, including Afghanistan and the Ukraine. The Refugee Resettlement Team helps with everything they need to start to rebuild their lives in a new country, including housing, employment, clothing, food, English classes, and referrals for legal and immigration services. The refugees are tremendously grateful for the compassion and practical help they're receiving, and they're giving back and helping each other plan for a brighter, safer future. Volunteer opportunities are currently available for those who would like to be family mentors and tutors so children and adults can practice English. To learn more about these rewarding opportunities, call 312-655-7096 
That's 312-655-7096. I feel special. <laughs> I feel great. I got good grades. We've seen a huge surge in our kids now meeting or exceeding grade level. Come check us out. You may have never thought we were an option before. Our school communities provide students with academic excellence and character education in a supportive and stable learning environment. Come see for yourself. Visit artchicago.org slash findaschool. Do you have an old bicycle that's not being used? Consider donating it to Catholic Charities Veterans Bike Project of Lake County. Skilled volunteers are refurbishing bicycles to make them safe and ready to be used by veterans to get to and from their new places of work. We also gratefully accept financial contributions that are used to purchase bike helmets and other safety accessories. Our veterans have faithfully served the United States and now it is our privilege to serve them. For more information on the Veterans Bike Project of Lake County, call 847-782-4219. That's 847-782-4219. Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines. My name is Joyce Deriga. I'm the editor of the Chicago Catholic. And joining you, for, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm at home today. I'm a little under the weather. But in the studio, we have Anthony Holter, who's the president of Empower Illinois. And we're talking about a really cool story that we covered in the last issue of Chicago Catholic, where St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier Parish in Wilmette has committed to raising $800,000 in tax credit scholarships, which will cover all the kids at St. Thomas of Canterbury School in Uptown for um, for scholarships. So one of the things when I was starting to do this story, I was wondering, you know, well, it's great if you could do it for one year, but then you get the hopes up of the, the students and the parents. Um, how do you retain the donors for next year? But Chris Vallis, who you mentioned, was the lay, is the lay leader at, um, and I'm a board member mm -hmm. of Empower Illinois, who is sort of spearheading the effort with Father Watts at the parish, and he explained that there's there's a process to it, or there's there's it's not as hard to get them donors to come back the next year. So, can you talk a little bit about that and why? Certainly. So, um, I think when I when I think about this opportunity, uh, and and certainly speaking with many donors, uh, when they understand the need um, and, and the opportunity to meet that need in this incredibly tax efficient manner uh, through the tax credit scholarship, uh, it's a no brainer. Uh, many of them, uh, it, we do surveys every year of our donors and they tell us uh, even if they were giving scholarship support uh, to schools in the past, they're able to increase that support uh, thanks to the tax credit scholarship program. So it is a really um, important mechanism to help increase the philanthropic support that uh, opens doors to opportunity for kids uh, across the state. So that's one, awareness is, is the very first um, part of the conversation, that there is need and that there's this vehicle or opportunity for donors to amplify their giving and amplify their philanthropy uh, for a very good cause. To the question of continuity, that, that's a very important question. Um, in fact, uh, this last legislative session, uh, we were able to work with uh, legislative champions, uh, lawmakers, uh, uh, Curtis Tarver, Representative Curtis, Curtis Tarver, and leader Lisa Hernandez uh, championed a bill in the House, 4126, which made an important change to the law. And that change is uh, implemented what we call year-over-year -year scholarships. What that does is if a student receives a scholarship this year, for example, they'll move to the front of the line when they apply for a scholarship next year. So that helps create this educational continuity that was not part of the operation of the law prior to that. Uh, so before this, uh, this law passed, if I got a scholarship one year, I have to apply every year and I could be first in line this year and 
50th in line next year. So that was a part of the law that we wanted to fix. It was important to a lot of the school partners that we worked with, certainly, most importantly, uh, to kids and families. So that's one of, the, one of the ways that we help ensure continuity, and that's through the policy or legislative fixes that we advocate for and work on on a daily basis. Uh, the other is engaging our donors in uh, stewardship, making sure that they understand the impact that their dollars have, and then certainly that the need continues year over year. And um, we have an incredibly uh, large and very generous uh, uh, group of donors who have made that commitment. Uh, we're always looking for more. As I mentioned, uh, for every one scholarship we award, there are five more students in line at, at a school throughout the state. Um, so we, we absolutely, if there are donors out there who are hearing this and saying, I'd love to learn more, we need you. This program doesn't exist without the generosity of donors. Uh, the demand, the need is certainly there. Well, and that kind of speaks to how do you raise awareness? And one of the reasons Chris told me that Chris Ballas told me that they wanted to do this program was to raise awareness among people to the tax credit scholarship program. We've, yep. we've done dozens of stories. And like you said, we're always at, um, hearing from principals and parents on how important the program is, how it's it's enabled their children to get better educations, maybe alternative to um, maybe a poorly performing local school. Mm -hmm. And but and so how do you raise awareness? How are you, are you working with parishes in the archdiocese and such to get um, more people to know about this program and participate? Yeah, so I, that's a great question, Joyce. And I like to say um, we have an awareness problem, not an affinity problem. So once people learn about this program, they love it. Uh, the key is, is getting them uh, to be aware of it, to share this, um, to share the opportunity to explain uh, how it works. And part of that is just is time. So we're working with the Archdiocese, certainly opportunities like this uh, through the, uh, the print story that you ran, the podcast. Uh, we do digital ads. Um, we're, we're running stories uh, in, uh, or excuse me, in uh, parish uh, bulletins and letters from pastors, all of those ways to kind of fill the windshield, so to speak, uh, for potential donors uh, to become aware of the program. What we found to be the most effective, uh, though, is when somebody who knows about the program and has participated uh, actively invites their friends or colleagues. Um, and so we kind of call this the one-to-many strategy. Are there opportunities in, uh, you know, people that you go to mass with on Sunday, that you have dinner with, uh, that you golf with, that you go on vacation with, to tell them, hey, uh, did you know about the tax credit scholarship program? And did you know that we're partnering with or we have the need at our, our very own school? So that word of mouth is, uh, is very, uh, very effective. Uh, but we are certainly taking advantage of all those kind of a marketing and communications opportunities uh, to tell the story. We love it, especially when schools and parishes themselves uh, kind of take the materials that we've crafted, they make it their own, they put their own voice, uh, share their stories from their own students um, and statistics at their uh, own school or in their own community. They make it their own and then they share it with uh, the, the members of the community. Is it a complicated process to get the forms filled out are there a lot of forms because i know that was another thing chris said that yeah it's easier the second year because all the forms are already filled out <laughs> and all the information's out there it is easier the second year uh, i wouldn't so there are a few steps to take but the good news is there are only four um in fact I, I'll, I'll show a visual aid here you can find this on our <laughs> website it's the four step guide uh, to making your tax credit scholarship uh, donation. So none of the steps are particularly complicated, but they do involve some time, certainly the first time around. Uh, but you have to begin by establishing a MyTax Illinois account, and that happens on the Department of Revenue website, or rather the uh, MyTax.Illinois.gov uh, website. Um, that's something that a lot of donors don't already have, and we are more than happy to help walk through that process. So again, uh, folks can reach out uh, on our website, um, at empowerillinois.org. They can email donors at empowerillinois.org, or they can give us a call 800-616-7606. We've got a phenomenal team of, folk, team of folks who have uh, helped walk hundreds of people through this uh, process. We will make it quick uh, and easy for you to get um, to get set up and then to start participating. So there's, there's really those four steps, but the first one is making sure you have the MyTax uh, Illinois account, so that you can register your um, your gift, your donation with the state, and then receive that state tax credit. Do you have 
a success story. I mean, we, you know, I know there are as many as, as many as scholarships that have been given out, but are there a few success stories you want to share about with the power in Illinois? Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to. Um, the, the first one I'll share actually is, um, it's from, I guess, three or almost four years ago now. Um, we had this event, a celebration event of the tax credit scholarship program um, at uh, St. Francis of Rome. The gym was packed, 350 people. I remember the uh, the Boy Scouts were set up in back, and they were going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And they had to move their setup like three or four times as we kept adding people and adding chairs. And it was just a, a very a, a wonderful sight to see so many community members coming out in support of the program. And we have various people in the community speaking about uh, the importance of the program. Again, this was was very new. Uh, Prior to this, um, you know, the program w was just an idea. Um, you know, we, we didn't have a year of scholarship uh, awarding or students uh, under our belt. And so uh, this was kind of the first year. And we had a, a father speak uh, there um, whose daughters were actually already at the school but were eligible for a tax credit scholarship. And um, he spoke uh, so eloquently, uh, beautifully, and he said, um, thanks to the tax credit scholarship program, I only have to work two jobs instead of three, and I get to be the dad that my daughters deserve. And um, wow. yeah, I kind of I kind of tear up even now recounting that story. Yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah. it's beautiful, and I think it speaks to the power and the promise of this program um, to help change kids' lives, to make sure they can attend uh, or stay in a school that is serving them so well. And we know too from stories like this that it has this carry-on effect uh, benefit for the for the family um, right. and for the entire community. Um, so these scholarships are awarded, you know, to kids to go to school. But we know that uh, the impact that they have is is so far beyond that. Um, you know, by, beyond that, beyond any one school year, we believe uh, for their future and their future success, uh, but to their family and to their broader community as well. Yeah, and every, you know, there's hundreds of these stories, and it's it's. Um, and we know our Catholic schools are, I mean, these go to pub, uh, private schools too, if people are, are yeah. going to non, um, non-Catholic non schools. But, you know, I think particularly one of the gifts that we have with Catholic schools is um, we look at the whole family, right? It's not just the kids or test scores or whatnot. It's really a community. And this is a way to enable more people to be able to take part in that community. And um, it's really one of the greatest ministries I think our church has um, in the United States today. We're coming down to the little bit of the last wire. Um, any last thoughts you want to share that I haven't thought to ask you that you want to make sure people know? Well, one, I'd just uh, love to speak to um, the, the images that we're scrolling on the screen there. We have so many stories of, of, of uh, kids and families throughout the state at all kinds of schools who have found a home. They found a good fit, and those schools really wrap their arms around these families. It's uh, something we're so very proud of, and we know that uh, these schools do so well. So uh, be certain to check those out, and, and if you're listening and you happen to be a family who's received a scholarship, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, these stories are what matters. This is why we do this work. Um, like I said, $270 million raised across the entire program, across all SGOs, that's impressive. Uh, but what's most impressive and most important is that every one of those dollars is going to a, uh, a child here. Like we've got these uh, smiling children so happy to be in their best fit school. That's, that's what matters most. So please do, please do share your stories. Um, and I really hope that um, this program is renewed next year in the legislature. Yes, yeah, so, so that, is, that is the top uh, priority from a policy perspective. Um, you know, this, this program works. Uh, the pilot program, if you will, um, pilots are usually done as a test, right, to see if something uh, works and the results are back. We passed the test. It's absolutely working for the kids and families who need it the most. And um, we need to let our legislative uh, lawmakers and champions know that this is something that should continue for generations to come. Absolutely. All right. Well, Anthony Holder, thank you so much for joining us today My and pleasure. to talk about this awesome thing going on up in Wilmette and the great work you're doing to 
for so many students and families across Illinois. So thank you. Thank you, Joyce. It's my pleasure. You're welcome. And a quick shout out to the newspaper. Just a reminder, you can go to chicagocatholic.com and you can um, sign up for a subscription. It's $30 a year and that helps support our ministry. You can also keep track on what the Cardinal's writing about. This His latest column is about the National Eucharistic Revival that, started, that launched on Corpus Christi this year. You can keep track on what some things that are going on with Pope Francis. Um, as we know, he's always making some headlines. Things that are going on with our schools. We've got a phenomenal uh, photo editor, Karen Calloway. So we have tons of slideshows where you can see great photos of events and goings on in the Archdiocese. You can also sign up for our free newsletter and follow us on social media. So again, thank you so much for joining us today, whether this is on the radio or on YouTube. And my name is Joyce Deriga, editor of Chicago Catholic, and you have a gentle and joy-filled day. Bye-bye.